Hey, before we begin the show, I want to talk to you about the All of Us Research Program. Hispanics are the largest ethnic minorities in the U.S., up to 18% of the population. However, we are underrepresented in research studies, only 10%. This gap means researchers know less about our health. Hispanics deserve to be represented in studies so we can know more about our health and be as healthy as possible. As our population grows, so should our participation. Create a better future by participating. Just visit joinallofus.org slash Highly relevant. Hello, everyone. My name is Jack Rico, and this is Highly Relevant, a podcast where I explore how Latinx pop culture is influencing and reshaping our view of the American mainstream. On the show today, we talk the Latinization of Sean Mendez. Entertainment reporter Lucas Villa from WeArMeToo.com will call in in just a few to discuss the Camilo and Sean Mendes Kessie remix collaboration where Sean sings in Spanish for the very first time. We'll also talk how much Camila Cabello has influenced Sean's interest in Spanish music. Then later, I'll be giving you three top-notch movies that I watched the last couple of weeks that will be worth your time. I'm not kidding about this. You're going to love these. But before we talk movies and Sean Mendez, here's a quick look at the top Latinx headlines making the rounds this week in a segment I like to call Jacked In. Let's begin with the top movie, TV, and music news of the week. Dominican singer and actress Leslie Grace will be the new Batgirl for the upcoming Warner Brothers DC film headed to HBO Max. Mexican comedian Julio Torres will write and direct Tilda Swinton in a new A24 film. Puerto Rican opera singer Justino Diaz will be honored by the Kennedy Center December 5th. America Ferreira joins Anne Hathaway and Jared Leto in We Crashed, a limited series at Apple TV Plus based on WeWork. Bachata group Aventura has added four new dates to their comeback stadium tour, including MetLife's Stadium on October 9th. Singer Laura Pausini will be making her film debut in an Amazon Studios production for 2022. Comedian and journalist Al Madrigal has inked an overall deal with CBS Studios. Marvel Comics will be celebrating their Latinx characters in the upcoming comic anthology called Marvel's Voices Comunidades. Afro-Latino Awards director Clayton Davis is the host of Variety's new weekly pop culture news series, The Take, out now. And entertainment reporter Rosie Cordero has left Entertainment Weekly and joined Deadline.com. And in tech and social media news, CNN Plus will be coming to a streaming platform near you. Instagram users can now control how much sensitive content they see. Apple AirPods update to arrive later this year. Snapchat is putting free episodes of HBO Max's Gossip Girl and Euphoria on its platform. Substack is funding the launch of a new podcast network called Booksmart Studios. Twitter is currently testing out dislikes on the platform. And Mariceleste Arras has joined Facebook Bulletin, their newly launched newsletter feature as the only Spanish language writer. Before we talk to reporter Lucas Villa about Sean Mendes singing in Spanish, let me tell you about the All of Us Research Program. Hispanic culture is pop culture. We are leaving our mark everywhere from music to food to fashion. One place where we need to make an impact is scientific research. All of Us wants to include our voices in research so we have a better idea of how unique we are genetically and to see if we're prone to other diseases. Did you know individuals of Puerto Rican descent are roughly twice as likely to develop diabetes as someone with South American heritage? Join the revolution by participating in All of Us. Visit joinallofus.org slash highly relevant. Now, on with our interview. Joining me now is Lucas Vila to talk about the new single with Camilo and Sean Mendes, where he sings in Spanish for the very first time. Lucas Vila, how are you? Welcome to the Highly Relevant Podcast. Hi, I'm good. Thanks for having me. So, got to read your article on the news that the Colombian pop star Camilo has teamed up with Sean Mendes to collaborate on a new track. How did this collaboration happen? And did it blow your mind when you first heard Sean Mendes sing in Spanish? The the track is called Que, que Si. 
and it's from Camilo's um, second, well, his latest album, Mis Manos. And um, the, the paparazzi spotted Camilo, his wife, Eva Luna Montaner, um, Camila Cabello, and her boyfriend, Sean Mendes, together in WeHo. So people thought, you know, there had to be some kind of music cooking. I, I didn't know what to expect because, like, you know, I, I've i never heard Sean Mendes speak Spanish. I mean, or, or not speak Spanish, but sing in Spanish. Tú me dices ahorita que me quieres a tu lado, que lindo sería. When I pushed play, I was, like, pleasantly surprised. Like, he, he we all know that he, he sounds great in English and... In Spanish, like, you know, like, just, like he, he sounds, he still has that same charm. Like, it's, it's, he sounds great in Spanish. Yeah, you know, I've seen a lot of artists uh, rarely actually emulate almost the language's feeling as they do in their mm-hmm. native language. For example, Beyonce, mm-hmm. when she did her Spanish language album, please tell me that you thought that she didn't speak Spanish fluently. You're like, yo, are we sure that Beyonce's not black, but really Dominican? It, you know, that was the word at the moment because her Spanish was mm-hmm. so fluid. And Sean here, I'm like, wow. Look, Drake sounds like it's not his language. Yeah. But Sean, it sounds like it's his language. Um, how much pressure do you think that Sean had going into this? Um, I mean, to be like, I guess to be hanging out with Camilo, who's like, one of the hottest pop stars in Latin music right now. Um, maybe he got inspired by that time that they hung out. And I mean, um, now that Dreaming, you know, is making music global, no matter the the, the language, um, you know, Sean might have come across Camilo's album and really just liked the, the vibe, you know, maybe not knowing what, what he's saying, but, you know, like the, the vibe of Camilo's music. So, um, you know, I'm glad that he went with that de- 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 decision to try out Spanish music with him. Now, as a Latino yourself, do do you, do you like that Sean is singing in Spanish, or are you like, oh, bro, are you just coming in visiting to try and make a little profit, a little splash, and then to get the hell out? What? Where do you think that this is coming from? Is it a a business strategy? Is it organic? Well, I mean, there's a very common misconception that that Sean Mendes is Latino because of his last name. He's a Portuguese de- descent, so you know, technically, he's he's of European descent. But I mean, as as long as you're not claiming to be like, you know, like Latin or trying to try and try, you know, like like him personally claiming that identifier, you know, then. You know, by, by by all means, sing in Spanish. Like like you were saying, we had um, Drake sing in Spanish, and it was a great effort. Um, we had uh, Beyonce. We had The Weeknd. So you know, you know, go 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 for it. And as long as you're, you know, doing it re- re- respectfully. What are you thinking about this 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 trend again? Of because I I first remember when Usher collabo with Romeo Santos on that jam mm-hmm. and back in the day. And that was like the first time that we're like, oh my God, this is about to become a thing. Right? Um, mm-hmm. From that moment in the evolution we've had until now, I mean, we've gone through Despacito, we've gone through Mi Gente, we've gone through I Like It Like That with Cardi B, these staple anthems, right, that have mixed its Latino culture with the American culture, that's including black and white. Do you think this is a thing that's going to continue forward, or is this a fad? From from the Latin artists that I've interviewed, like I've been talking to a lot of them about, like you know, these crossover moments that were happen- that are happening in Latin music, and a lot of them are t- t- telling me now that before the Latin artists had to really push to be collaborating with, you know, these. Anglo market stars, and now it's actually the the Anglo stars that are wanting to jump on these Latin tracks and you know work in the the Latin field and the Latin a- a- industry. So now it's the other way around, which you know I I I, I think that's cool that you know that the trend has changed where now the Anglo stars are you know wanting to get in on on this, and as long as they do it re- respectfully, like you know. Um, 
but it could be a cool way to further amplify that music. Well, Lucas, uh, thank you so much for coming on and talking to us about this crossover, essentially, between Camilo and Sean Mendes. He's a big star, uh, came up through Vine, uh, came around the same time that Justin Bieber came. They were essentially rivals almost at the same exact time. We've seen them grow up, become musicians. He's going out with one of the biggest global pop stars in Camila Cabello, who also happens to be Latina and Cubana. So this Latinization of Shawn Mendes, <laughs> I hope it's here to stay, Lucas. I hope it's here to stay because because uh, I, I I liked it. I, I I like it. Yeah, I mean he 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 sounds great doing it. So like you know, and like I, I read that Camila helped him with the pronunciation and everything. So uh, you know, like it doesn't seem like so gimmicky because he you know he's he's surrounded by. A lot of, you know, like a lot of Latin culture now, probably through Camila and now Camilo. So, you know, as long as you do it like, fully and sound great doing it, then go ahead. Bueno, uh, Lucas, thank you so much, man, for being on the Highly Relevant Podcast. Talk to you soon. Well, thank, thank you for your time. <laughs> You know, finding good movies has become a bit of a grind for me for a while. I've seen almost every good movie of the last 40 years. So finding something new that I like, well, it's almost an impossible task. That's why I'm trying to make things a little bit easier for you guys for this weekend or any time that you want to watch something new and that you just don't seem to have found that great movie that you can enjoy with your wife, with your friends, with your family. Uh, or just for yourself. So I'm picking out three films that I believe will be worth your time. Let's begin with Greenland. We now are getting word that the fragment has hit Central Florida. Oh my God. Wait, are some more pieces gonna hit? Come on, let's go. But the sky's on fire. Two days. They got it all wrong. There's a ton of fragments. Planet killers. Space agencies are predicting an extinction level event. We're gonna be together, all right, kiddo? We're just trying to get to safety. They've been tracking the military flights to bunkers in Greenland. It's their only chance. Move back! Perimeter breach. Perimeter breach. So here's the premise. Gerard Butler stars as a structural engineer, a guy who basically develops buildings, who together with his family have been chosen to be saved from an Earth-destroying comet. Where is Dad? We'll find him. It's okay. Clark's largest fragment will hit in less than 24 hours. So the other night, my wife asked me to find a really good movie to watch that I have not seen. This is when I remembered that I had been reading The Hollywood Reporter and read that Gerard Butler's Greenland 2 had been sold at Cannes for $75 million. I was a bit shocked at that because I was like, yo, that price is a little bit elevated. And I've seen the movie in the archives of HBO Max that I've never clicked on it. It just didn't seem like the type of movie that was worth my time. But $75 million for part two? That means that part one must have been really good. What did I miss? So I cross-referenced it over at Rotten Tomatoes, and the rating is almost 80%. Now, how the heck did I miss this? So I watched it, and after it was over, I had almost cried twice and got chills like three times. Not exaggerating. We were completely surprised by how entertaining the premise was and how realistic many of the performances were. Gotta give it to them. They got the best out of these actors. There's this one scene where a kid is kidnapped. Man, it had you just completely livid and really scared all at the same time. Watch it, let me know what you thought. I really enjoyed it and I think you guys are really gonna enjoy it too. Seek shelter immediately. Seek shelter immediately. My brother in law came to celebrate his birthday with us and his family, and I had to find another great film to watch that I haven't seen and that they haven't seen, and that they were going to really like it because I felt like that was a bit of a gift. Like I had to pick a really good movie to give him as a gift, quote unquote. Um, so he can have a really good time and we can all have a good time. So I rented Nobody starring Bob Odenkirk. 
Heard you had some excitement last night. I wish they'd have picked my place, you know? Why didn't you take him out? I was just trying to keep the damage to a minimum. Yeah, how's that working out for you? What are you still doing here, old man? I'm gonna fuck you up. <laughs> you can call it an action thriller very heavily influenced by John Wick movies. It's about a mild-mannered man who becomes the target of a vengeful drug lord only to be revealed he is an unkillable machine. I had heard about the film earlier in the year when no one was really giving two hoots about movies and I had been hearing that it was like the sleeper film of, you know, 2021 but earlier in the year. So I went over to Rotten Tomatoes and it had an 84% fresh rating and here's the catch. It had a 94% rating from audiences. Now, I'm not going to say that I believe that every single movie that Ryan Tomato says is good is good, but for the most part, it gives me a good sense of whether the movie is good or whether the movie is bad. So according to these ratings, eh, pretty good. So we watched it and it became one of our favorite films of 2021. Seriously, a true delight. Funny, twisted, dark, and with a lot of action. Who the fuck are you? Me? I'm nobody. So for my next film recommendation, I got an email from a publicist about a new documentary premiering August 13th in theaters and on demand called The Lost Leonardo. The documentary is about the inside story behind the Salvatore Mundi. It's the most expensive painting ever sold at $450 million. So I find this painting that's cataloged as after Leonardo. The lost Salvatore Mundi, the savior of the world. The painting was very damaged and I removed some retouching. My hands are shaking. No one could have painted this except Leonardo. And it claims to be one of the rare long lost masterpieces by Leonardo da Vinci. But was it? Is it real or is it the greatest scam ever told? You're gonna have to be the judge on that one. Been authenticated. Wow. Oh God. I love documentaries about art, especially if they're about Leonardo da Vinci, but this is as good a story you'll find this year, and it's really well told. It feels like a sophisticated thriller, worthy of a Hollywood feature-length film in my opinion. Give it a try, because I know you're going to enjoy it. It's not just art history, it's world politics. Everybody was complicit in dreaming up lost Leonardo da Vinci. Nobody really cares what the truth is. 240 million. 300 million. 400 million. Sold. This is the most expensive painting ever sold in the history of the art world. Where the hell is that painting? Nobody knows where it is. And before I wrap up here, here are three land tracks you might want to add to your playlist this weekend. Luna de Plata, La Garfield. Todo el día en la cama, Cheo. Destroy the Empire, Pachimán. That's it for episode 155 of the Highly Relevant Podcast. I'd like to thank Lucas Villa for coming on the show. And if you like the show, please subscribe and leave a review. Also, we have a new podcast about race and pop culture called Brown and Black with Mike Sargent and me. It's available on all podcast platforms. I'm Jack Rico. See you next week on another episode of Highly Relevant. Highly Relevant.